All right, so for this one, we have a guitar capo, right? It's a clamping tool that you use to essentially play in a different key. You put it on your guitar neck, play in a different key. Um, for this one, we're going to assume that we have a uniform distributed load, says rectangular distributed load, same idea, uh, applied over uh, length E, right, that you see on the two sides of that jaw. Uh, and then it wants to know what's this force in the spring connected at points B and C, right? So what do you want to do first? You want to skip this one, okay? What if that's, you know, what if, what if you didn't want to just throw in the towel? Like you just want to, you want to try to, try to do this problem. You want to do a free body diagram. I like that idea. Of what? Okay, so we want to probably choose one part or the other and do a free body diagram of, of one or the other of the parts. Okay, which one looks like it might be a little bit easier? Okay, I'll say the one that looks to me a little bit easier is going to be this, this part that goes like from A to C with this other jaw that goes over here. It looks like everything's aligned a little bit more properly there. Although the other one's not that bad either, right? But there's going to be a couple of lengths and stuff that you have to figure out if you do that one. So I like the idea of doing a free body diagram of this little piece right here. Okay. And so I'll do that. Basically, it looks something like this. Um, and I've already said that we know this W, uh, this, this distributed load that acts over this little length right here, right? Can I go ahead and simplify that at all? Okay. So I probably can, and I can probably treat it like it's one lumped load in terms of the reactions that it causes at the supports and stuff. What's the magnitude going to be of that load acting over that uh, little jaw right there? 3.8 pounds per inch multiplied by what? Okay, E is how wide that little piece is right there, which is 3.4 inches. Right, so that's going to be the amount of force that, that gets applied there. And how far is the line of action away from the point where we're probably going to be summing moments around? We haven't really talked about that yet, but let's say we know already we're going to sum moments around point A. Okay. It's going to be equal to D plus half of E, right? That's how far away that is. So we're going to have D as 0.4, right? I'll tell you what, I'll just write it like this. 0.4 inches plus uh, 3.4 inches over 2, all right? Then what? We have a pin at A, right? Why don't I go ahead and, and write those on here? I'll show these two reactions here, and let me call this one maybe R uh, A Y, and this one R A X, which sort of implies that I have chosen a coordinate system where I've got X here and Y here. So I'll go ahead and put those on there. Okay? But those aren't really the thing that I, I really need to think about. What else should I think about? Up there at C, right, I'm going to have this force that acts in that spring. Let me just call it F spring. That's what I'm going to ultimately be trying to find, right? That force in that spring has an angle, right? That little angle right there is going to be equal to that theta of 19 degrees. Okay? What else? What else would I maybe want to put on this diagram? How about this length right here? Are we given that length? It says that's also 3.4 inches, right? So let me just put that in right, like right here, 3.4 inches. Okay, there's a little free body diagram. What do I do with it? Okay, you can do equilibrium equations, 
Well, we want to be smart about our equilibrium equations. We don't care about finding RAX and RAY. Those are not part of what we are tasked with doing. So if we can do something that will get rid of RAX and RAY, that might be smart to do so that we don't have to deal with them. So what's a technique of getting rid of RAX and RAY in an equilibrium equation? Some moments around that point, right? So summing moments around point A, I'll take 3.8 pounds per inch multiplied by 3.4 inches and multiply this by 0.4 inch plus 3.4 inches over 2. That is going to all be in the counterclockwise direction, right, around point A, which I'm taking that to be positive, so I'm going to leave all that as, as positive values there. To this, I'm going to, or from this, I'm going to subtract this F spring, the effect of that rotationally around point A, right? So the rotational effect of F spring around point A is due only to the horizontal component of it. The vertical component of it has a line of action that passes through A, right? So I don't have to deal with the vertical component. I only want to deal with the horizontal component of F spring. How do I get just the horizontal component? Okay, F spring multiplied by the cosine of 19 degrees. Okay, that gets me the horizontal component. What do I do with that? Yep, got to multiply by the distance from the line of action of that horizontal component to pin A, which was given right here with 3.4 inches. Right? Those are my only rotational effects I have around point A, which means I can now take this equation and solve for F spring. Okay? Probably the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and take a fraction uh, that is 3.8 uh, times 3.4. times uh, 0.4 plus 3.4 over 2, okay, divided by the cosine of 19 degrees times uh, 3.4 inches. This gives me 8.44, uh, we'll say. And this is going to be in pounds. So, in the case of another spring problem, are we going to have to deal with spring constant? He says, could there ever be a problem on the test where you might have to deal with the concept of a spring constant? Okay. So, let me ask you this. Should that be out of bounds? There's no reason that should have to be out of bounds because you know how spring constant works, right? Okay. Spring constant is that force is equal to what? K being a spring constant multiplied by, I'm going to call it maybe delta, meaning that's how far you have stretched the spring relative to its free length. So if, if you knew, like, let's say K and delta, you'd be able to find the force. <laughs> 